Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Zach Cox, and today what I got for you is five of the most what the fuck death scenes in the Grand Theft Auto series. And here lately on the channel, I have covered two videos on the most brutal deaths in the Grand Theft Auto series, but this is just the most WTF unexpected deaths out there and some of them are pretty funny some of them are somewhat crazy and most of the deaths in this video do come from either grand theft auto 4 or grand theft auto 5 so bear with me there these games just feature a lot of crazy things so that being said here are five of the most wtf deaths in the grand theft auto series First up, we have a man by the name of Chubby Charlie from Grand Theft Auto 4, and if you're gonna die, you might as well go out in style. Though this man plays a minute part in the game's plot, Chubby Charlie has one of the most epic death scenes in the entire game. After finding out about Phil Bell's involvement in a sour drug deal with the Russian mob, Charlie goes into hiding, but he's tracked down by Nico at Phil's request. He, along with a group of his men, are holed up in the abandoned Sprunk building where Nico must shoot his way through various thugs in order to confront Charlie. As Nico chases him to the roof, it looks as though Charlie has managed to escape via a helicopter. Though he's barely hanging on, this dude's got some serious grip strength. Nico manages to shoot the chopper down with Charlie holding tightly to the landing gear. The chopper spirals out of control, crashes back into the Sprunk building, ending with a huge explosion. Moving on to a character that's so unimportant in Grand Theft Auto 4 that he doesn't even have a name, we encounter him in the mission Late Checkout from Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico is sent to kill some Jewish diamond dealers in their apartment at the Majestic Hotel. Though this big name target here is a Jewish gangster by the name of Isaac Roth, his execution isn't even the most memorable of the mission. After killing Isaac, Nico makes his way to the roof where he's met by a number of goons. But there's also another high priority diamond dealer up here on this roof that these guys seem to be protecting. Though you could gun down everyone individually, something pretty cool happens if you shoot a propane tank laying on the ground. After doing so, this diamond dealer is going to be engulfed in flames and in his disorientation and pain, he actually falls off the roof in a long fiery death screaming all the way down to the ground. In Grand Theft Auto 5, the game offers the player a multitude of things to do on the side to keep them busy and immerse themselves within the massive open world of San Andreas. You can do it all, from racing, to tennis, to drinking, whatever it may be. But one of the more interesting among these activities are the random encounters you'll have with NPCs dubbed Strangers and Freaks. These missions introduce you to a number of colorful characters and you have to interact with them, sometimes telling a little story along the way. One of these characters is Dom Beasley, an adrenaline junkie who gets acquainted with Franklin at some point throughout the game. Dom does everything from dirt biking to skydiving and just living a very adventurous lifestyle. And just when you think he's got it all down, splat. Dom goes and dies right in front of you, jumping off of the Land Act Dam without a parachute and falling to his death. Aside from the jetpack, of course, if there's one thing Grand Theft Auto V lacks, it's functional couples. And one of the most messed up couples that we actually come across in GTA V has to be Floyd and Deborah. And we're actually first introduced to Floyd through Trevor and Floyd's cousin Wade when these two are staying in Los Santos for a time. And the two of them actually crash in Floyd's fiance's apartment. And though Floyd doesn't seem happy about this at all, he seems like he is intimidated by Trevor and just scared by the dude and doesn't know how to tell him to get out. Though, once his fiance Deborah finds out about this is when things actually start to go sour and just go south. Tensions boil over and what was first a perfectly normal domestic dispute quickly turns into a living room standoff with Floyd wielding a knife, Deborah holding a gun, and Trevor just standing there. And he doesn't look pleased one bit. And that's about the last thing we see on the screen after a fade to black where we see Trevor coming out of the apartment covered in Floyd and Deborah's blood. 
leaving us to wonder how in the world did Trevor do this and what in the world did he do to this dysfunctional couple? I should probably go say hi. I wouldn't. Why not? Let's go get in the car. All right. Let's go have the time of our lives. Before we get to the last death in this video, I do want to give an honorable mention to Johnny Sindaco from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And in this game, he is an underboss for the Sindaco family, and he's caught vandalizing some slot machines at Woozy Moo's Casino. And as his men are about to get rid of Johnny, CJ intervenes, and Johnny is tied to the hood of a car, stomach down, facing the front windshield, while CJ drives dangerously around the city in order to scare Johnny into telling him which family he works for. Proving to be a very traumatizing experience for Johnny, he spends a lot of time recovering. However, when CJ later accompanies Ken Rosenberg to a meeting with Johnny Sindaco, Johnny recognizes CJ right off the bat and having not fully recovered from his trauma, dies from a shock-induced heart attack. Man. Oh, my crisis fucking thing. <laughs> Good, cool mustache. Yeah, how you doing? Pretty good. And you? Ah, I still got a little bit of the night terrors, uh, touch of diarrhea, but I'll get through it. Huh? Diarrhea? Cool. And yeah. uh, who's this? How you doing, Johnny? It's fucking him. It's him. Oh, oh my head. Oh god, it's him. It, oh, my heart. My heart. Damn, that nigga fucked up. And last up, we have Anthony Corrado from Grand Theft Auto 4. This happens when things start to get pretty hectic and out of control for Nico after he begins working with the Italian mob. In one particular mission, we see Nico infiltrating a hospital full of police, and this requires Nico to actually sneak in and dress up as a doctor. A member of the Pegarino crime family, Anthony Corrado, becomes a target once it's discovered that he's actually a police informant and he actually wore a wire throughout a portion of the game. And after suffering a heart attack, he's taken into police custody and is heavily guarded by police officers in the hospital. And Nico is sent in to assassinate him by any means necessary. And while you can just bust through the doors and shoot this dude in his head while he's laying in his bed and just be done with it, there's somewhat of a more disturbing option and should you feel like it, you can actually shut off Anthony Carano's life support, which leads to a brief sequence of Anthony squirming in pain and squalor before delivering his last words and dying right in front of you on this hospital bed. You look tired. Tell Beg. Uh, I'm sorry. All that said, that actually wraps up my list of all of the what the fuck and unexpected death scenes within the Grand Theft Auto series. If you guys did enjoy this video and feel it's worthy of a like, that's awesome. Be sure to do that. If we could go for 2,000 likes, that would just be amazing. Be sure to subscribe to never miss out on more daily video game uploads on my channel. And with that said, now the way, I believe that's just about it. You guys all take it easy. Have a safe one. My name is Zach Cox, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.